Good morning. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. This is Kurt Welch. You've seen him on the show before. What we should be saying is good evening because we're here about an hour before sunset. We're back on Carter Lake. You saw us film on Carter Lake in the boat, and this time we're on the bank. We're going to try to catch walleyes from the bank because we got bombed with emails and people wanted to know about the details of that. Kurt, we're on the bank. No boat tonight. What are we going to do? Well, I think uh, number one is we're going to have to be uh, really sneaky, really quiet. Yep. Stealth is uh, probably a big key because I think the fish will be very close to the bank if, uh, if they're moving. That's what we're hoping. Now, we expect to catch them better as the night wears on, so stay tuned and get comfortable. This ought to be interesting. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. All right, guys, so here's the deal. You know, if you're a fan of the show, that we've got a big fancy Ranger boat, and even a little tiny boat, and even some kayaks that we fish out of. Why are we on the bank? Well, the reason we're on the bank tonight is because a lot of you emailed after we did a last walleye show saying, hey, could I do that from the bank? So, of course, we always want to do what you want us to do, so we're out here on the bank tonight. What we're basically going to do is walk and cover maybe, I don't know, a half mile of bank. We're at Carter Lake again here in north central Colorado, and uh, lots of walleyes in here, and we're expecting that they should be somewhere right around the spawn. We're, uh, where are we, right at the end of March right now. And uh, we're literally a week from when we filmed the show last year that we did from the boat and, uh, and had really good success casting back at the bank. Well, now we're going to stand here and throw out. We're working the same baits on the same rods, suspending jerk baits, the same basic rod setup. And we're going to try to be real quiet and real sneaky. And we're going to fish till maybe an hour after dark. So we're going to basically duplicate what we did on that show. Only this time we're going to do it from the bank and see how that pans out. Hey! On the pause again. There you go. And and she's, I don't know, man. There's a there's a transition in the bank right here, and you're right on the corner. <laughs> and you know, get her done. One of the things I think is important too, uh, when you're playing fish with braid, is to not overpower them. Correct. You know, I've got a medium action rod here, and I'm still taking it pretty easy because um, I, I know that there's no stretch to the line. That's right. And uh, so I'm just going to take it easy and kind of bring it in and lead it up to the net and my net man here and. Hey. We got, got success. just like that. And that's not the right color, Kurt. They don't huh? bite that color. I, uh, <laughs> I guess I should have paid attention. You should have got the right color, Kurt. That's uh, a I good, all nice that came off. All right, so we'll get, get him the hook out, out of the way. Here. We'll get a hold of him. It's a melting male right there. Yeah. Like yeah, that, that one's happy. I think that's a pre-spawner. Look at that. Yeah. So, nice and fat. They're healthy. Yeah, yeah they're no, fat. They're healthy. Yeah, he's excitable. Well, that's a melting male. This is the exact size that Parks and Wildlife wants us to eat in here. And so we'll, we'll give a quick board on him. Uh, 16 and three quarters. He's right. perfect size to that. eat. A couple of the key differences to keep in mind if you're going to fish from the bank is that your bait is working up the hill. Your bait's landing outside of your strike zone and working into it instead of landing in your strike zone and working out of it. Both Kurt and I have talked. You see Kurt's right here. Both of the, he and I have talked at length about this. As it gets dark, as it gets darker. You can catch rainbow <laughs> trout right here. <laughs> That's not a walleye. <laughs> but man, was that action. And I should have known because he's, oh, there he hey. goes. <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's one way to get your evening started. So if you ever I, want to know how to catch rainbows, yeah, there's a Yeah, who knew, up. right? A big jerk bait and a rainbow. There's a right on the bank, no less. No, we, uh, we do expect, though, as the evening wears on, that these fish are going to get closer and closer and closer to the bank. And so uh, we'll get quieter and quieter as the evening goes on, and, uh, and we'll fish tighter and tighter angles to the bank. Now, I expect that, that when we're dealing with bank fishing situations, we may have more of an issue with, uh, with losing baits because we can't get them back. 
So as the bait gets closer to the bank and I am fishing a suspending jerk bait, I'll start working it with a slightly tip up like that and that'll lift the bait in the water column and basically head it for the surface. What I expect will happen by doing that is that may generate strikes right there uh, as soon as that bait turns up, as soon as the first time I jerk it towards the up position instead of horizontally or down, uh, I expect that that's when it'll get bit. So we'll see. I, I won't be surprised, and I bet you won't either, if we get bit literally right on the end of your rod once it gets dark. Not at all. If we were bass fishing, that's where I'd expect to get bit. Yeah, and, and my experience here of night fishing uh, has been just that. They, they'll bite you right here in front of you. But not if you're quiet, or not if you're not quiet, and certainly not if you got lights shining in the water. And we definitely will not be doing that. I don't think light in and of itself hurts anything, so long as that light is there and not moving around. But you put a light on your head, then you start looking around, and it's strobing and flashing every which way. That'll certainly put the fish off. Absolutely. Now, Kurt, I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, but if if people at home are watching the show are limited to fishing strictly on the bank. Do you agree that if they learn to fish in the dark, at least the low light periods more than any other time, uh, that they'd catch more fish and probably bigger fish for sure? Absolutely. Uh, you know, especially, you know, we're out here on a lake where there's nobody around. We have the whole lake to ourselves. Yeah. I fish a lot of um, what I would call inner city lakes, gravel pits and stuff that have been reclaimed and turned into park lakes. And they get a lot of pressure once you get to this time of night and the sun goes down, that pressure Everybody is all gone. Goes home. And yeah. you can then have that lake to yourself too for the most part. You might find a few people who are out bait fishing for catfish maybe. But I think that the fish also know that and because you got the cover of darkness that gives them a, a big sense of security, they'll move in, they, they move away from the cover that they're on for the most yep. part and then become edge oriented, move up close to the edge of the bank and that's where you can catch them. Well, and that's it. They get within casting range. They might spend all day out there suspended where you have a hard time getting to them from the bank. And then it gets dark and they all pull up on the bank, you know, and yeah. then you got fish that are within range and looking to feed. You know, I think, what, what's the correct word? I think it's crepuscular, I think is the word. Active at dawn and dusk, you know, and, uh, and or nocturnal, you know, and you get those two things together with the fish and a bank angler can do well in the dark, much better in the dark. I'm throwing a hard suspending jerk bait. It's got about a two foot long, 15 pound, 100% fluorocarbon leader, and it's on 20 pound trilene tracer braid right here. And a six foot eight medium power, extra fast action St. Croix and a size 20 Revo. It's the same jerk bait setup I've done a jillion shows with. Kurt's mixing it up a little bit more than I am. I'm going with, with, with what I would call the, the standard. I know that they like suspending jerk baits. Kurt, what do you got right now? I'm throwing a, um, a soft jerk bait and I had uh, started out with a, a swim bait. And uh, like you and I have talked before, you know, we both feel that the, the strong bite and our best opportunity is gonna be with a jerk bait. Yeah. But like we've talked before, we like to mix it up yeah. because you might get onto something that uh, goes a little bit against what, what you believe and, and uh, have an opportunity to catch more fish. We're just gonna continue to work up and down this bank. And, uh, and we're working maybe a half mile or something like that is, is our plan. Um, couple things about that. We're, it doesn't matter if I'm in the boat or on the bank. We're still going to try to key in on transitions on the bank. Transitions in bottom content. You can see we've got a couple of bushes right here. None pass there and there's just a couple more on the other side of Kurt there. Those bushes tell you that there's some gravel. If you look on the bank you'll see some stuff growing up through here. There's a little bit of gravel mixed in with the rock here. Bank's a little bit flatter and that's what you see these bushes that are out here. So it's given us a little bit of a flat spot on the bank right here, or out off the bank, to, uh, to look for some fish at. So rather than do a major mix-up of baits, we know that they like suspending jerk baits, we know they like this color, we know they're along this bank somewhere this time of year. So the question then becomes the little nuances. Where exactly on here do we fish, and how hard do I have to jerk this bait versus let it pause? Now see, if you look at this bank, one thing that's interesting, it, it's flat, 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 and then we got a little cut in it here with the, you know, the natural terrain. That's the beauty of reservoirs, and then it gets steep right after that. My prediction is where we're going to get bit is right after this when it transitions to steep. Right where the brush meets right the, where the, the steep Right where the flat spot rolls up onto there. That's going to be my prediction. I'd love to tell you I scouted that. I have not. There's one right there. That. Nah, that might be a better one there. Look at here, we'll come around over we'll here. Come side. Uh, trolling motor, oh, come on yeah, around we there. There we nice. go, Mr. Welch, <laughs> we're gonna that? get him done. Yes, sir. Nothing like some pre-spawn walleyes. Now that one also thumped the bait. 
completely and uh and he front got a oh, front, front hook in the snout is exactly what you always want and there is another perfect that? eaten size well want to check him for length too yeah we'll throw him on the board real quick and make sure but i'm pretty sure he's going to go in the box in the box he goes uh, weren't we just talking about this being the perfect spot right here with this yeah, little i rain think or... we're doing all right that ranger live well doing you... just fine there yeah i think that transition in the bank kurt <laughs> i like the way you called that shot that was that was perfect Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. All right, so here's the deal, guys. If you look, we're at our first real transition in the bank. There's it, The corner's breaking around. The camera can't get that, but the, the bank's banking around, so we've got a little bit of a main lake point right here. It's got big chunk rock there and then all this broken rock right here and I can see on the bottom that it's gravelly and sandy out there. Uh, we'll give this spot a good solid workout with several different baits just because it is a transition and see if, uh, see if that'll pan out for us. Fish, oh god, oh. You have one bang it? I had him. He just sipped it. He just pulled it away, sitting dead still, and just right here in front of me. That line was just sitting like that and he just pulled tight. A key thing you'll notice if you watch some of these clips from the last show, Kurt and I were casting, working our bait for like the first third of the retrieve, and then reeling it up because we weren't expecting fish to be out that far off the bank. Well, now it's the other way around. I'm throwing out past the fish where I expect them to be so that my bait's at the proper depth when it comes in. And I'm actually hoping that, that more likely you're gonna get bit on the last third of my retrieve than I am the first third of my retrieve. That's a really so good point. It's a, it's a, a different mindset because you'll notice when you watch those, we just reel the bait up once it's halfway back to the boat. And uh, it, this is gonna be a completely different deal. You never have to give up on a cast fishing right here. They could literally bite it right off the end of the rod, a couple of feet of line out. In fact, I'm kind of expecting that tonight. One thing I also do is run my drag softer because of that, because I don't care who you are, your reflexes are to yank when he grabs it right there in front of you. And, uh, and with braided line and fast action rods, those give you a good lure action, but they aren't real forgiving at fish at point blank range. And you could pretty easily get short lined. Absolutely, and uh, and I've had a lot of fish that have hit very close to the bank that have just come off. Yeah, uh, because you didn't get that good hook set into them, didn't give them a chance to turn in position to where exactly. you get a better penetration. And, and really, with the braid and the fast rods right here, all you got to do is come tight on them. You don't, you don't, you shouldn't have to do anything. But your reflexes are to yank. <laughs> that was a long dead pause. Yeah, and you know what's crazy about that one, Curtis is. That was a long dead pause, but the fish just very casually started swimming away with the bait. It just slowly started pulling like the boat was drifting away. Let me get the fray bill here. Yeah, that's a, that was a weird bite. This fish just barely swimming. Look, there's one with swimming it. with it. Look at it. Oh, look at his buddy. Get his buddy too in the net. <laughs> nice, you got him. You got his buddy. Look at that. Is that awesome? <laughs> he got the buddy, dude. It wasn't even hooked. Two for one. No, isn't that funny? That's awesome. We're gonna put this one back quick though, because he's not legal catch. But how about that? Fish was not even hooked. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. How cool is that? Now, we've talked about in the past about why males, they'll school up. We were talking about earlier today. Males will school up together and they get competitive with each other when you get around the females. And uh, that was a classic example. That fish almost met his demise. And you'll notice too, as the night goes on and it gets quieter and gets darker out here, I'm going to get quieter and quieter and quieter. In fact, we had some feedback, Kurt, from the last time we did the show in the dark of people saying, geez, you are no excitement. Well, it's not that, it's just you have to be sneaky. You're, if you're expecting fish to be in shallow water, fish that are relatively known to be shy in the first place, and they're gonna be right in front of you in shallow water, you just can't make a lot of noise. You can't make a lot of exaggerated motions, not if you expect to catch them. And so as it gets darker and fish get shallower, we expect it will get quieter and certainly more deliberate in our movement. Last year, or earlier this year on Pueblo Reservoir talking about transitions and I got lots of emails 
for people that were surprised at how many bites we got right on transitions. Then it was because I just ran around fishing transitions. I'd fished 50 feet this way or that way, and that's it. And then I'd go to the next one until I figured out exactly what kinds of stuff they wanted. And then we were able to, we, we caught fish on like three. There's one right there. Oh, awesome. Nice, there awesome. we go. Now that one got it right when I bounced the bait. That might be a bass or something, or a trout. He got it right when I pulled the bait, which is the only one that's bit it moving. No, it is a walleye. Yeah, it's a walleye. Over here, buddy. There we right. go. There we go. Awesome. And he's oh, unhooked in the off. net. Okay, so I'll hold the net tight if you want to. Here, I'll, I'll just get a hold of it. I'll let you get the fish and all. Oh, God, that's a melting male right there, guys. Excellent. Oop, there we go. Now, there's another easy cheetah. <laughs> so there's another perfect one right there, guys. That's another one just like the others. You can see he's melting right there. It's kind of gross, I realize, but look at the teeth, and you can maybe get his eyes to shine a little bit right there, but you can see. But that's perfect, perfect 17 inch walleye right there, perfect size to, to be taken home and eaten out of this lake. So if you can see here guys, now we've got smaller broken rock on the bank. We moved down another, we've probably covered a grand total of a quarter mile now. And uh, we just walked the last little ways without doing anything but walking along. And basically what we're doing is trying different types of rock, different transitions. You can see we got a bunch of brush and stuff right here. And we're just kind of trying to narrow down where these walleyes might be. When we were in the boat, we had the same thing, and what you saw is we just circled back and kept going and fishing the same spot, which gives, the boat gives you the luxury to do that. But you can do the same thing from the bank, obviously, as well, just by moving up and down. All right, Mr. Welch, so was he on the long pause? It was not a long pause, kind of a medium pause, let's okay, say. Okay, I'm gonna leave my bait sitting down out here, and I'll get a net, and we will catch that one. So guys, there you have it. That's your first cast on the transition, on this transition, correct? Correct. So, Suffice it to say. Now, here's something of, of a note. Ooh, foul hooked him. Foul hooked him. So he. So either, we will be releasing this one. Either, there you go. So he either just slapped at it, or you were late, or I was late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's unhooked. He's unhooked in the net, and he is foul hooked. So we will be letting this one go. Uh, right. Actually, he's hooked on the chin, Kurt. So oh, he, oh no, he's not foul hooked either. He's hooked right there in the mouth. Yeah. Now I want to show you guys, it's another melting male that you can see just like uh, the ones we caught here last year. Now it's all about the transition on the bank. You see we've got the small rock, that's your first cast here. It was. And we just walked we, down here. As we were walking, we Beautiful really fish. made that comment about how that, that change right here was uh, so profound. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. One thing we did was we changed completely how far I'm throwing. In the beginning, I was making long throws because I was expecting fish to move in. Now that it's gotten dark, for two reasons. One, for control, and one, because I, don't, I can't see what's out there. I expect the fish are going to be in tight anyway, so now I'm just making real short little pitches and little short half casts off the bank, and that's all I'm going to do for the remainder of the next hour that we fish, is keep the bait real close to the bank all the time, less chance of, of losing it, getting snagged up, and, and, uh, and just as good a chance of catching the fish since they're up against the bank anyway. Now please kill that light. <laughs> oh my god. All right, right point blank range right in front of me, just like they're supposed to do. Give me that horse right there, Mr. Wells. That's right. Nice, nice. Who dude. needs Look a boat? That, Who needs a boat? Look at we that. We don't need, yeah, hold that real tight. I'm going to get under yep. this gill. I don't want to get the gill, but just right, the gill flat. You get that. And, and this I'll St. Take, Croix right I'll here. Take rod. Excellent, excellent. How nice. pretty is this? Now, this one's nice. over the slot, so this one will be going back in the lake. If we get this unhooked quickly, we'll put her back quick. Holy smokes, guys. Now, how close to the bank was that Right, fish? right off the bank right here, right in front of me, just like we've been talking about. All right, guys, so oh, this one. Nice one, look at that fish. If I can get these pliers put down that <laughs> right there, guys. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's for, huh? a big old female walleye yeah, right there. Sweet. And we're going to get her back because we don't want to keep her out of the water and grab that rod. Kurt, thanks very much. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. All right. Don't here we go, right here. Got it right here. Look at this fish, guys. How about that? Big old fat, healthy female. And again, it's, this fish is well over the slot, and I don't want to hurt her, but look at that fish right there. There you Gorgeous. go, baby. She bit right here. I mean, 10 feet from me, right there. 
and just came tight. She just, just thumped it and just came tight. Just like we had been professing that they're going to be close to the bank and the darker it gets, the closer to the bank they're going to be. That was a beautiful walleye that right there. A gorgeous Big walleye. old female full of eggs. Yep. They get a lot bigger than that, but that's fun. And catching them from the bank, right at dark, right at the same time we said yeah. we'd catch them. Yeah. Awesome. Mm, that's nice. good stuff right there. We're only going to use this light for a second, guys, because I know it's going to mess with the fish. But the reality is this. You can see these transitions in the gravel in the bank. That fish that I just caught was literally right off the end of the rod right here, and she just thumped it. I just held her right there as long as I could just hold her good-sized fish like that, and you got to be a little bit careful with it. But the as, as we've said, we just got dark enough out where I had to get a headlamp out and, uh, and right up against the bank and just absolutely park the bait. So you can't make a lot of noise. You can't have a splashlight shining around or you're just not gonna get bites, especially from the mature females like that one. And that was a beautiful fish. They get bigger than that, but I'll take that one all day long. So there you have it, guys. We've come to the end of our two and a half hours. We actually pushed it, went almost to three. Uh, we wanted to duplicate what we did in the boat show. In the boat show, uh, we caught more fish. Tonight we caught larger fish. The fish you caught was as big as anything we caught in the boat show. Mm -hmm. The one I caught was quite a bit bigger than anything we caught in the boat show. That was a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Awesome. Beautiful big fat female in the spawn mode. Fun to let her go. Uh, she's over the legal slot anyway, but fun to let her go. And uh, great times. Uh, you know, the reality situation, March, April, if you're a bank fisherman and you want to catch walleyes, this is the time to do it. Do it early, early, early in the morning or late, late, late in the evening. Yep. Uh, the wee hours of the morning, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning be an excellent call if it fits your schedule. We're going to be home by 11, yeah. and uh, and that's hard to beat. Couple you, couple quality fish. You bet. You know, and just uh, all you have to do is come out and do it. I mean, here we spent three hours out here tonight. Yep. And uh, if I wanted to come out at five o'clock in the morning, and I could still be to work on at eight. Yep. And uh, so just go out and do it, and you have an opportunity to catch a nice fish like sir. Chad caught tonight. Yeah. There you go. Well, a couple Beautiful. of fish, we'll take it, guys. So uh, no boat, no problem. We appreciate you guys watching. Uh, check us out on Facebook, check us out on Twitter, look us up on Pinterest. Most importantly, we hope you'll tune in and we'll see you next week. That's like, like daylight. I know, right? How cool is that? And you can leave those things on indefinitely. They don't draw anything. Amazing. Isn't that cool? That's Rigid Industries coming out here right there. This might get my man card taken, but I have a carpeted and padded bed in my truck. I don't know if you can be a man and have that in the back of your pickup. I'll but... tell you what, I like it.